Hi, welcome to The Curious Baker. I used to have a sourdough starter that a friend gifted to me, but unfortunately, I accidentally killed it. So I thought there's no better time than to make my own starter from scratch. About two months ago, I started the process and here's the outcome. I've been nurturing the starter and feeding it daily, storing it at room temperature. I use a combination of whole wheat and all-purpose flour, and I learned quickly that, that room temperature can greatly affect the outcome. The colder the room, the longer it took to develop. Once I leveled out the room temperature to around 68 degrees, give or take, the starter took off. It's like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Too cold, too hot, just won't do, but with the right conditions, the starter will flourish. I thought it would be fun to make a new starter and film each of the steps and see how that starter develops throughout the week. Hoping by day seven, the starter is ready to be used. All right, let's get started. So what we're gonna need is some flour. I used um, a 50-50 mix that I made myself here in this container. It's whole wheat and all purpose mixed together. So that's just gonna be my starter feed and that's what I use this container for. I always have it in my cupboard, so when I'm ready to feed my starter, I can just grab it. Then we have some water at about 78, 80 degrees temp, room temperature. And then a glass jar. You can have a, any glass jar, plastic jar, or a container. I'm gonna use just this simple canning jar here. I have a scooper for my flour, not needed. Could use a measuring cup, a spoon. And then I have my scale here, my digital scale. So you can use any kitchen scale. I find that a digital scale is really handy in making bread in general. It allows you to use grams and measuring grams, but if you don't have a digital scale, you can make your sourdough maybe using about a half a cup of flour mix and have a cup of water. So for day one, we're going to add 50 grams of flour to our jar. So I'm just gonna take some of this flour, try not to make a big mess. There we have 28. 40, 47, 52. So that's all right, 52 is okay. We don't have to be precise here. And then I'm going to add 50 grams of water. I'm just using my kettle because it allows me a little bit of precision here and easy to pour. So now I have 50 grams of water and now we're gonna mix this up. I know that the tartine book recommends that you use your hands to mix. I'm not gonna do my hands for this. I'm just gonna use a spatula and then we'll cover it up and let it rest for 24 hours. All right, so let's just quickly stir this. Mix it together. It's going to be like a thick batter in texture. And it's okay if you need to add a little extra water or a little extra flour. I'm using 50 grams. Um, I know some other recipes would call for perhaps more. And you can make more if you want. You can do 100 grams, 75 grams. Just make sure that your water and your flour is around 50-50 mix there. I'm going to do 50 grams because I don't want a big starter. I don't want to waste flour and I can always build it up later. I can always add as I'm feeding a little bit more flour and water. So there we go. We have our mix there and I'm going to loosely put on the lid. I don't want it to be completely airtight, but I'm going to loosely put on the lid and now we're going to let that sit for 24 hours and come back and feed it. All right, so now it's been 24 hours and we are going to do our first feeding. For the first feeding, I'm not gonna discard any of the starter. I'm going to just add to it another 50 grams of flour and another 50 grams of water. And we're just gonna build it up for another day. And so this is what it looks like. And now we're just gonna add to it. So here's our flour mix. I'm being a little extra careful so I don't make a big mess here on camera. There we go, 50 grams. All right, and then I'll do 50 grams of water right in top of that. Oh, a little extra. Well, that's okay. I'll just level that out with another eight grams here. That's no problem. All right, there we go. And so then I will mix this up in with the original. Mix it up until all the flour is incorporated with the water and the original mixture. And then when we're done, just wipe that clean. There we go. And there we have our day two. So here I'm going to, again, put the lid back on and we're gonna let it sit for another 24 hours. And then we're gonna be on day three. 
So now we're on day three and we have our starter here. And now we can see there's starting to be a few bubbles here. And if we smell it, it should smell slightly sweet, like a overripe fruit. But if your starter is not developing, you could also leave it for an extra day and then feed it. But I'm gonna go ahead and on the third day here, we are going to discard about 80% of the starter. So I'm just gonna take some of the starter out and put it here in my bowl. Here's where it starts to get a little messy. <laughs> I'm not gonna measure it, I'm just gonna eye it. So about 80% there, just a little left, about a tablespoon's worth maybe, and then we are going to feed it. So I'm just gonna set that there. So now I'm gonna add 50 grams of flour mixture. Oh, 51, perfect. And then 50 grams of water. Just gonna take it up to about 100. Oh, a little extra. And then we'll mix that together. All right, so once that's done, our feeding is over. Super easy breezy. And then we're gonna put the lid on loosely and let it sit again for another 24 hours and come back on day four and discard and feed again. All right, now we're on day four and we're gonna take a look at the starter. Well, there's a little bit of bubbles in there. Smells good, smells sweet, and I think we're ready to feed it. So actually, we need to first discard, again, about 80%. And again, I'm just gonna eye that, stick it in here where I will then discard. You can use, I know, starter discard for, there's recipes out there for pancakes, for English muffins, for naan, all kinds of things, even cinnamon rolls. But I'm gonna just take this and, and we have about, I would say close here to 80% out. I'm making a big mess. And then I'm gonna feed the starter. And we're gonna do 50 grams of flour. There we go. And then 50 grams of water. That's all right. And then I'm gonna mix it up. Scrape the sides of the jar down, clean it up a little bit. And there we go. So now we're going to, it's a little messy, but now we're going to loosely put the lid back on and let it rise again for another 24 hours and we'll be back on day five. All right, now we're on day five. Let's take a look at our starter. It's got some nice bubbles, some, not a lot, but still it's nice. It's nicely progressing. The scent is nice. And I think we might have a nice starter here in a couple days that's ready to use. So what I'm going to do is again, discard, same routine, discard 80% and try not to make a big mess along the way. We go, I have about 20% left. Let's add our flour now. So now I'm gonna add 50 grams of our flour mixture. And I will say it's really handy to have your flour mixture pre-mixed and maybe in its separate container. Of course, you can just use, if you have whole wheat flour in a container and you're all purpose in a container, you can definitely just take from that. There we go, 50 grams. And now we'll do 50 grams of water. There we go. And now we're gonna mix it up. Scrape down the sides of the jar. All right, so now what we're gonna do is just again, loosely put our lid back on and we're going to let it sit for another 24 hours and come back on day six. All right, now we're on day six and let's take a look at our starter. Uh, there's a little bit more bubbles and I can also see that it's getting ready, really ready to be fed. You can see a little bit of, or I can see a little bit of liquid. I don't think you can probably see it, but there's a little bit of like a, kind of like a clear liquid and that's okay. You might see that. It just means that really the starter has sort of a cycle. You'll feed it and it will rise when it, as it starts getting active. And then when it's ready to be fed, it sort of drops back down. Um, so now we're really ready to be fed. But there is more bubbles in this one on day six than there were yesterday. So that's great. And now I'm going to actually 
before I feed it, I'm gonna discard 80%. Let's see if we can, if I can not make a big mess. And I think that's pretty good. And now I'm going to feed it. So let's do, again, 50 grams of the mix. I don't wanna spill. Let's just do, we'll do 53 there. And then I'll do 50, 53 grams of water. And then let's stir that up. Scrape the sides down. Really make sure that that flour and water is mixed up. And there we go. We have our day six complete. And tomorrow we'll take a look and see how it is after a week on day seven. All right, so now we're on day seven. And let's see how our starter is progressing. At this point, we should have a starter that's ready to go. If it's not ready, of course, you can just continue the process, discard, feed every day, let it rest for 24 hours. Um, that's not a problem. You can let it keep going as the days go on. It's just gonna get better and better. So right now it looks pretty good. We have a lot of nice little bubbles in here. It's ready to be fed for sure. I can see that it's getting a little runny and that's typically what happens when it's ready to be fed. But the smell is really nice and I think we have a successful starter here. So if you're interested in taking your sourdough starter and making 11, which will ultimately give you a nice loaf of sourdough bread Follow along in my upcoming videos. Thank you for watching. Leave a comment and let me know if you're gonna make your own starter. Thanks for watching.